let us see the fundus findings in a patient of papal edema and correlate these with the reasons behind these findings that we have already seen earlier. So we have already seen the pathogenesis of papal edema and for a quick recap, papal edema is a bilateral optic disc swelling secondary to a raised intracranial pressure. It is passive, hydrostatic and non-inflammatory and it is bilateral but it can have an asymmetric presentation. So a patient with intracranial tension presents with headache and the visual complaints can be transient visual obscurations that typically last for a few seconds and they are seen on waking in the, in the morning or on rising. So they are postural complaints. Let us see the changes under these headings of disc findings, vessels, the surrounding retina and the ocular complaints. So in the early stage of papal edema, there are very minimal changes and one thing we should look out for are the spontaneous venous pulsations. So these spontaneous venous pulsations are seen at the disc and if absent, it raises a great amount of suspicion for intracranial tension. However, in 20% of people, they might be normally absent. And so these are not diagnostic, but we should look out for these findings. So in early papal edema, what do we see? We can see indistinct disc margins. Let us remember that the last to be affected is the temporal part of the disc because it is the thinnest. The nerve fibers here are the thinnest and so the swelling is seen last here. So in early papal edema, we can also see mild disc hyperemia and this is because the surface capillaries on the disc dilate. Important to remember that the visual acuity here is normal and as these findings are minimal, this can go missed. Moving on to the acute established papal edema, this is where we can see the characteristic findings of papal edema. What is striking here is the disc is enlarged, elevated, it has indistinct margins. The hyperemia is severely increased as compared to that seen in the early stage. So once this edema goes in the peripapillary areas, it causes a grayish opacification. And this leads to an obscuration of the vessels leaving the disc. And eventually even the vessels on the disc are obscured. And this is very characteristic in distinguishing it from a pseudo papillary edema. And so if we can see an obscuration of the vessels, it is a true papillary edema, which is because of intracranial tension. Other vascular findings we can see are venous engorgement, dilatation. Here we can see tortuosity of the vessels. And there will be there can be peripapillary hemorrhages as we can see in this area, this picture. And even exudates can be deposited. Exudates around the macula can give a macula star appearance because they deposit in that fashion. Not to be confused with a macular fan. A macular fan is because of the edema that leads to vesicle formation. And these vesicles spread along the nerve fiber layer towards the macula and arrange in the form of a macular fan. One more finding seen here are these circumferential folds around the disc. These are known as patterns lines. Patterns lines are these circumferential folds because of the edema that throws the surrounding retina into the folds. We should remember that the vision is normal even in this stage but on fields we might be able to see an enlarged blind spot and why is this seen that is because of the detachment of the peripapillary retina from the disc and that leads to an enlargement of the blind spot the edema also fills up the disc and we can see a loss of the typical cup okay so after the swelling in the acute stage moving on to the chronic papillary edema stage here, as we can see, there is a characteristic reduction of the hyperemia. Another thing is that the exudates start getting resolved and it is at this stage that the patient will complain of a drop in the vision. Field testing will show a constricted field 
and the disc is still elevated and indistinct but the hyperemia is reduced and this gives it a champagne cork appearance of the disc in the chronic stage in this stage gliosis sets in in the peripapillary nerve fiber layer and this is seen in the perivascular area leading to perivascular sheathing one more finding is the optociliary shunt vessels that dilate here so these are pre-existing channels that dilate when the intracranial pressure is high there is an obstruction to the central retinal vein at the disc because of the disc swelling because of which these shunt vessels dilate in this image we can see these bodies at the, the disc this deposition of refractile bodies can be seen that gives it a drusen like appearance also pigmentary findings pigmentary changes might be seen at the disc and the macula so this is what we characteristically see in chronic papilledema with a drop in the vision and constricted fields moving on to the post papilledema optic atrophy stage this is the stage of secondary optic atrophy where there is a pressure induced axonal damage because of the chronic long standing pressure and the ischemia here we can see that the disc is characteristically flat and atrophic also it is no longer hyperemic and it has a dirty white or grayish white pallor the vision is dropped there are severely constricted fields and one characteristic thing seen in the post papilledema stage not seen very distinctly here but we can see like these folds around the disc the concentric lines and these are called the high water marks these are post papilledema findings of previous elevation of the disc so they give us the extent of how much the disc had swollen previously high water marks are typically seen after a high tide resolves similarly here it is also showing us the previous swelling of the disc so these are the fundus changes seen in the different stages of papilledema and we have correlated these with the pathophysiology behind these findings thank you for listening